Hello fellow Vulcans, I'm Ryan Barnhart, Director of Alumni Relations and proud alumnus of the classes of 2008, 2009, and 2019. I'd like to welcome you this evening as we take a trip down memory lane and reflect on our favorite homecoming memories and what homecoming means to us. We've had the opportunity to interview a number of alumni from different eras of the university about what homecoming means to them. We hope you will enjoy this retrospective as we hope you enjoyed all of our other programming this week coming to you virtually with Homecoming at Home, from parade highlights to classic homecoming football and everything in between. Without further ado, let's turn it over to our alumni to share their favorite memories about homecoming with you. And we're talking more about our homecoming memories here as we celebrate Homecoming at Home this year. Uh, and with us today, uh, as we continue this um, special retrospective, we'll, we'll be bringing you uh, different guests to talk about and share their what homecoming means to them. So uh, here's our first guest, Randy uh, Katz Minerva. Well, Randy, uh, welcome and thanks for joining Thank us you. today. Thank you. Uh, um because I probably didn't do it justice, can you introduce yourself and your class? Yeah, yeah. Um, Randy Katz Minerva, uh, class of 1998. Awesome. So, Randy, uh, we want to know uh, two things mainly, and we'll, and we'll take them one at a time here. Uh, okay. So, understanding this is a PG-13 show, yeah. What do you have a favorite homecoming memory that really sticks out to you? Well, when I think about my homecoming memories, it always comes back to one memory of just – which isn't appropriate right now, but crowds of people gathered together, just all celebrating. Um, I remember being between three fraternity houses and bands playing, um, wearing my wool sweater, because that was the time it was like the kickoff to fall on campus. But just being with all of these people that are your friends from the current time, but then everybody coming back and just just the music playing and everyone hanging out was just, the, those are things we look forward to every year. Awesome. And then uh, lastly, you know, this is a short interview. Um, what does homecoming mean to you? Now, now knowing that, you know, as, as a student, as an alumna, uh, and then even now in your role back at the university. So how, how can, how do, what, you know, and, and if it means the, something to you in each of those three phases, we'd love to hear that or just overall. Well, I think for me, homecoming's always been like this big Cal U community family reunion. Again, going back to all the people coming back and visiting and spending time together. Um, the fun of being part of a Greek, of the Greek life, the Greek community at Cal, um, the excitement for the whole week of putting together our floats and pomping, um, and then spending time together, the camaraderie with each other. But then, um, when all the older sisters came back to visit, that was, again, it was like the family reunion. Your relatives are coming back in town. Um, so that was always so much fun. And those are the times I've, I treasure. Um, but now working back at the university and, and so many of my coworkers also being Cal grads and sharing those memories and, and even being together and having the same experiences. That's, it's just, it's very heartwarming, I guess. It's, it's again, it's times that we look forward to every year, spending time together, rekindling those friendships that maybe you don't see each other all year round, but you see each other at homecoming and it's, you know, you're back at it again. You have the same experiences and the same memories to share. Excellent. Well, I, I, I can second that. I mean, I know, you know, um, even the homecoming memories that I don't quite remember are still pretty good too, right? There's lots uh, of those. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We have that shared collective. So, uh, well, Randy, thank you for joining us today uh, yeah. and sharing your homecoming experiences and your memories. Uh, we'll look forward, and I'm sure everyone else is looking forward to get back when we can have homecoming in person uh, to seeing you there. Uh, hopefully, you'll have your jacket on. Uh, yes, I can put my jacket on. Yeah, so absolutely. That, yeah, that, that's <laughs> my. You know, that that's one of those. Uh, I think a cool a cool visual too to see folks from different eras, you know, rocking their gear. and, and Absolutely. Stuff. Awesome. Well, Randy, thank you for joining us today. Uh, and for folks watching at home, uh, we hope you are enjoying our homecoming retrospective. Stay tuned for more uh, homecoming memories. And we're continuing our conversation with alumni about their, what homecoming means to them and their favorite homecoming memories. And I have another alumna that I'd like to let her introduce herself uh, to you listening and watching at home. Hi, I'm Betty Bongiorno-Kavinka, 
and I graduated from Cal State in uh, 1981 and 83, both undergraduate and master's. But my favorite homecoming memory, of course, was I got to be homecoming queen in 1980. And I was very excited about that. Uh, and my favorite memory was that Willie Stargell was the Grand Marshal of our parade. And who didn't love Willie Stargell? So it was great whenever we uh, were in the parade, but to walk into the stadium and everyone was quiet as we were walking in. But as soon as Willie came in, the crowd just started cheering. And of course, I was walking right along with him, so I felt like this is great. <laughs> he was stealing your, yeah, he was stealing your thunder. That's yeah, all. you know, that's all right. It was okay to to have him be uh, stealing that thunder with me. So, so that was uh, that was one of my favorite memories. That's awesome, and thank you for sharing that with us. Mm -hmm. So, we're asking everybody else one other question, um, and this one, I guess, is a little more difficult, right? A little more I have to be a little more thoughtful here, I guess. Um, but you know, as an alumna and a former homecoming queen. What does homecoming mean to you? Well, homecoming is all about the friends that you made while we were in school. I was very fortunate to have a great group of friends. Uh, we lived in Clyde Hall on the seventh floor and we were close. Uh, we actually called ourselves the sisters, Seventh Heaven Sippin' Sisters. <laughs> and we really just keep in touch with each other uh, throughout the years and those friendships have been have meant so much to me and that's what I think homecoming is all about when we can get together and meet up and just feel like we've never missed a beat we've always uh, and even though all, we're all over the place many of us uh, many of uh, still live in the Pittsburgh area but a lot of us have moved on to other states and uh, when we get together it's like we've never left so we, uh, it's, it's great to go back and visit every once in a while and see all the wonderful changes that uh, have happened at Kelly. No, absolutely. And uh, I think um, as we talk to other alumni, you know, from different decades and eras, whether it's Cal State or, or Cal U, yep. uh, that is a very pervasive feeling, that, that stick together group that kind of just travels with you. And it's always cool to see those little pockets, you know, come back. So um, you know, well, thank you for sharing that. And um, unfortunately, we're not able to, you know, be together for homecoming face to face. But hopefully next year, we'll be able to see your friend group there, too. Sounds good. Awesome. Well, thank you again for sharing your memory. And thank you for watching at home. Keep rolling on as we continue our uh, homecoming at home coverage. And we're continuing our conversation with alumni as we stroll down memory lane and talk about all of our favorite homecoming memories. And we have another alumna here with us and I'm gonna allow her to introduce herself to uh, everybody watching. My name is Ashley Roth. Um, when I was a cow, my main name was Baird and I am a 2010 and 2012 Cal U alum. Ashley, what's up? How are you doing today? I'm oh, great. How are you, Ryan? I'm good. Thanks for uh, uh, talking to us here. So, you know, we know that um, not only are you a two-time uh, alumna, but, you know, you also were on court, right? Yes. So, uh, and I think, right, you won, right? Like you're, No, you're, you're, I no, didn't. Not, okay. But I, but I did. I lost to Jackie Davis, who I absolutely love. Oh, so no, Jackie. Okay. okay. That, it's that year. Okay. Then that makes <laughs> sense then. All right. No, cool. All right. Well, so we're having, we have two questions that we're talking to everybody about. And um, one is, what is your favorite homecoming memory? So I would have to say my favorite homecoming memory would be the whole process of homecoming court. I ran in 2009 with a very good friend of mine who I still keep in touch with, Greg Flood. And it was always a big deal. We hung sheets from porches and roofs and we actually went around dorms and knocked on doors. I mean, it's like we were literally campaigning for like state senate um we had a photo shoot we hung you know posters all over the the walls and the buildings and um it was just an amazing time and then there was the big announcement where the band was there we didn't have the bonfire anymore but um um they announced it that thursday night and um greg and i made it on homecoming court and it was just it was an amazing weekend 
all that good campaign had paid off, right? Absolutely. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so the second question that we have here, and I think this is the harder one, because you know, it's a little more reflective and whatnot, yeah. but um, what does homecoming, as an alumna, you know, what does homecoming mean to you? Um, I would have to say it, kind of going back to what you said, it's a time for reflection. Um, I was very involved on campus, so it brings back all those memories of um, the the week, the year that I got on homecoming court, it was also the unveiling of the Vulcan statue. So it makes oh, me think yeah. of like big events like that and how the progression has been made from when I was a freshman until now. So homecoming, it's just like, again, a time of reflection where I can think back to, you know, how things have changed and progressed and how much the university has meant to me and my family. I met my husband there and, um, just always good memories. Homecoming's the time to just celebrate the good things that Cal brought to me. Absolutely. And unfortunately, we, you know, we're not going to be in person this year, but at least right. we're able to do some things virtually and connect and, uh, you know, look, and it'll make, you know, anticipation makes the heart grow fonder, right? So Definitely. homecoming is going to be a blowout, right? It's going to be great. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, Ashley, I want to thank you again for uh, taking the time to uh, share your homecoming memories and uh, we'll catch you later. And we're rolling on with our favorite homecoming memories as we talk to different alumni from uh, the university. I have an, uh, another alumna with me here. She doesn't need an introduction, but I'm going to ask her to introduce herself anyways. Hi, Ryan. I'm Joy Helsel. I'm a graduate of 1983, the last graduating class of California State College. And I, I graduated with my master's in 1986. So you got it both ways then. You can claim both eras then, right? Absolutely. You're the old and the new school. I love it, Joy. That's awesome. Well, thanks for joining us today. Um, so we're, uh, we're playing this two-question lightning round about homecoming uh, for our mashup of all these memories. So first question, um, Joy, do you have a favorite homecoming memory? And, and I realize, realize that you have many hats, you know, as, a, as an alumna, uh, as a, you know, working in at the university too, but is there any one in particular that maybe stands out more than the others? Actually, there is. I was thinking about this. We, in the early mid eighties, we were able to do some really fun extravaganzas for halftime at homecoming. Um, I was a graduate assistant in the program office. So I was heavily involved in those activities and like one year, I think the theme was movies or Hollywood. I can't remember. Um, we had the court dress, the women dress in fancy gowns like they would to go to the Academy Awards. Oh, wow. And we rented tuxedos for their escorts. We rented limousines. The limousines drove them around the track, dropped them off at a red carpet to walk out onto the field so we could announce the queen. And we even gave people that were standing along the fence um, flashes, like camera flashes. Oh, cool. So, so it kind of looked like we had this big press corps there. Yeah. And we had staging on the field. We had backdrops and stuff. It was pretty awesome. Um, and we did another one where it was historic events. And we rented um, historic costumes, like from the 1800s for the women and the men. And we built a float that looked like a steamboat to bring oh, them onto cool. the field. So those were really fun. Unfortunately, those extravaganzas cost us a penalty every year because oh, we man. ran for time. Yeah. So that's why we don't do it anymore. Oh man, that but uh, you know maybe those uh, fifteen yard flags were worth it there for some of those uh, elaborate setups. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. All right. And the last question here, um, and I think this is the harder one, you know, uh, got to be a little more reflective, but what does homecoming mean to you? I'm going to answer this kind of in a different way. Um, we moved here in 1961 when my dad was hired to teach in the industrial arts program. I went to my first homecoming parade before I was even a year old. <laughs> and I've only ever missed one homecoming in all these years. And that was in 1991 when I lived in Boston and I had to work that weekend. So I couldn't take off and come home. Um, and I will never forget. I wore my Cal U red and black with my Cal state pendant and my go Vulcans pin. 
and I was at the train station waiting for the commuter rail and it was a perfect fall football day in Boston. It was like perfect. And I was a little emotional because I was missing that first homecoming. And I took the commuter rail into the city and I was kind of crying. Um, and the gentleman sitting next to me asked me what was wrong. And I said, well, I'm missing the first homecoming at my university since 1961. And it was during that day that I realized that how important those memories are, um, how important homecoming is. But I also realized that no matter where you were, you could still celebrate homecoming and you're always a Vulcan. Awesome, Joy. And I think that is super reflective of this year, uh, you know, as everyone kind of has, as we're all celebrating it at home, you know, homecoming at home. So, um, well, hopefully, though, this is the last one we'll have to do it like this, uh, you know, and we'll be able to get every, the band back together, as they say, for next year. So, all right. Well, Joy, I want to thank you again for uh, taking some time to uh, share your uh, homecoming stories with us. Uh, and we want to thank everybody for watching with us today as we continue our reflection on homecoming. And we're continuing our homecoming memory share and trip down uh, memory lane uh, this year uh, as we continue our homecoming at home. Um, we have another uh, alumna guest with us. I'm going to ask her to introduce herself now. Hey, everyone. My name is Mariah Peoples. I am a graduate of 2018, and I am now uh, the development assistant here at Cal U. Mariah, thanks for taking some time out today to talk to us about homecoming. I appreciate it. No problem. All right, so uh, this is like the lightning round that we're playing with all alumni that have volunteered to help us out here. So um, do you have a favorite PG-13 homecoming memory? Yeah, <laughs> PG-13. Yeah. Of, yes. course, of course, right? <laughs> uh, yes, Um Throughout my years at Cal, like I was always the one to just be going to class and going like straight back to uh, my dorm. So whenever homecoming came around, that was my time to really get together with my roommates and go to the football games. And I never really went to football games. Only homecoming time did I go to football games. And I remember my first year, um, I went to the football game and just to see so many people so many current students, alumni, all in their red and black. It was just such a good sense of unity. And, I, and in that moment, I was like, this is, this is where I'm supposed to be. Like, I never felt more at home than here at Cal, especially being away from my home um, during my first year. Because um, almost every weekend I was going back home. I was so homesick. But I was like, this is it. And I started going home less and less to, to then never really going home on the weekend. Um, so that, that was my favorite memory, homecoming my freshman year. That's cool. And it kind of changed the game for you then for the room, you know, to get you from that, hey, I'm, I'm a homebody, I'm always going home, to where, you know, campus is the fit. So that's pretty cool to see too. Yes. Okay, so Brian, the second, last question here. Um, this one's the hardest, and considering that you have multiple hats, as a, from a student, as an alumna, and now as a staff member, what does homecoming mean to you? Homecoming means to me family. Um, really carrying on those multiple hats from being a student, now being on the totally opposite side of the fence. Um, one thing I really gather from every homecoming, like I said before, is a sense of unity, community, and family, um, alumni who I've never met, you know what I mean? People who've graduated in the 50s, 60s, 70s, um, just getting them all together, it's like, and talking to them and learning their stories and whatnot, that, that feels good to me. And I look forward to that every year. So really homecoming means to me, this is when all of our family is about to get together. Family you don't even know yet. <laughs> family and friends and um, long-term relationships established so awesome cool. no awesome i appreciate them Mariah. so thank you for sharing your homecoming memories uh and thanks everyone for tuning in and we hope you're enjoying our little 
walk down memory lane. So just keep it tuned here for more homecoming memories and other homecoming at home activities. Hello, my name is Dina Moore Schultz. I'm a 1958 graduate of California State Teachers College, now Cal U. Thank you for the invitation to share some memories of homecoming and my years at California. Many happy memories of those four great years of learning to be a teacher, of making many good friendships, of participating in many activities and organizations on campus, the student union, remembering those twin towers, those dining hall dinners. My friends and I called ourselves the South Hall Sisters as we lived in the South Hall dorm. Later, we became the Delta Zeta Sisters as we were the ones who first organized the first Delta Zeta chapter on our campus, Zeta Epsilon. My favorite homecoming memory, of course, would be that in 1957, I was elected the homecoming queen. That was a very happy day and I felt very honored. Our float was a giant silver slipper. I really did feel like Cinderella. So I'm wishing you all a happy 71st homecoming. God bless and go Vulcans. And we continue our homecoming retrospective and sharing uh, some memories with various alumni throughout the years. Uh, I have another alumnus with us today. I'd like to ask him to introduce himself. Hey there, everybody. I'm Ryan Woodchuck Kuntz. Uh, graduated at Cal U back in 98, way back then. Ryan, thanks for joining us today, man. So uh, I know you're busy, so we won't take up a ton of your time. We have two questions, kind of a lightning round we're playing with everybody here uh, that we've talked to. Uh, so the first question is, do you have a favorite homecoming memory? Yeah, I've worked at uh, CUTV the whole time I was there. So homecoming was always a, you know, a busy weekend for us, covering uh, the football game and covering the parade. So we were always running around, but it, you know, it was always pretty uh, – Pretty fulfilling weekend, you know, to get all that work done with our crew and having a good time while we were doing it. It's essentially like the Super Bowl for, you know, like CUTV, for alumni, for a lot of different offices on campus. That's like our, uh, you know, our like our Emmys and, uh, you know, the Oscars and everything at the same time. So that's yeah, cool to hear. It right. always brought uh, the, you know, guys that had graduated that you know they came back to town too so they would jump on a camera or something you got to work with some guys you hadn't seen for a while too which is cool bring all the vets back yeah absolutely for sure um okay so uh the second memory or second question then this is like a tough one um what does homecoming mean to you as an alumnus yeah like i said when the, the guys came back to town you know you meet some really great people in college and especially I think in the in the television world you really get to know people well and and uh, having those guys come back to town and hanging out with them well, it was always a good time and then uh, uh, you know the one year I ran for uh, homecoming court as well and that was always a good time too uh, running around and I wasn't in the, the Greek system so I was a, a rogue agent out there trying to get into the the parade and uh, it was cool, you know, everyone at the station's helping out, hanging bed sheets out their window and, and going to the dorms and handing out flyers and trying to convince people to not be a schmuck and vote woodchuck. It was, it was a good time. <laughs> we have my vote for the campaign slogan there. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Nothing wrong with a good outlier candidate either. Well, Ryan, thanks again for uh, sharing your memory, man. We appreciate it. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to see you back Whenever we can uh, have homecoming in person again soon, maybe you'll jump on a camera for us too. So I'm yeah, sure Gary Smith would appreciate it. But <laughs> yeah, I would love to make it back sometime. Absolutely, man. Well, thanks again, and thank you, thanks you, thanks to everyone uh, for tuning in. Uh, we hope that you continue to roll on as we continue to celebrate homecoming memories. And virtual homecoming rolls on as we talk to another alumna about uh, her favorite 
Homecoming Memories. I'm going to ask her to introduce herself now to everyone. Hi, my name is Jen Segato. Um, I graduated undergrad from Cal in 85. Master's program, graduated in 87. And I work in the Office of Success. Awesome. Jen, thank you so much for joining us today uh, and giving us a little bit of your time. I know you're super busy uh, and we're trying to, to be you know, cognizant of everybody's time. So we'll play our lightning round here with you. Um, <laughs> then we're asking everybody. First question is, remembering this is the PG-13 show, uh, do you have a favorite homecoming memory? This is going to sound really corny, but one of my favorite homecoming memories is one of the years that we got roped into having my university ambassadors dress up in, in as characters and walk in the homecoming parade. And nobody wanted to do it. <laughs> really cool costumes. And someone, I can't remember who it was, but someone says, well, if you do it, we'll do it. So I had no choice <laughs> and I did. I got in costume that year and I was Mickey Mouse and my grad assistant, Liz Geisick, was Minnie Mouse. And I have to say, it was one of the warmest homecomings on record. Those costumes are extremely hot and the heads are very, very heavy, but just the excitement of the little kids along the parade route. It was a homecoming I really remember. We got to approximately geckos, is that what it's called or what it was called then? And we couldn't do it anymore. We just got a fire truck. <laughs> it was just so hot that you just couldn't do it. And, you know, as Mickey and Minnie, you couldn't run into an establishment and, you know, so we rode on a float or a fire truck. I can't remember. That's awesome. As a former costume parade member, I can also attest that when it's unseasonably warm, those, that's the last place you want to be. So I can, uh, I, can, I can dig that, Jen. Thanks for sharing that with us. And then the last question here, knowing that you've worn and wear a lot of different hats as an alumna, as a staff member, what does homecoming mean to you? Homecoming to me is a chance to reconnect with all my orientation leaders. Um, for years and years, I've been a judge for the floats. And it seems that my old students always know where to find me, at either in front of the library or on the patio of Azorski. And it's an opportunity to see my old kids, as they call them, and now meet their wives and get to see their children. And it makes me feel extremely old. But it is ex it, it's what I look forward to every year from homecoming. And I have to say, even when I had a hiatus from Cal U and worked in West Virginia, I still made every homecoming. It's just very, very important. Something about this place in like the first or second week of October that just sucks you back in, right? You know? Well, this is a very odd story, but when I was a child, we used to take rides on Sunday with my grandma and grandfather. And I don't know why, I don't know if it was intentional, but every year at homecoming, we would take a ride to Cal U. Well, Cal State. Cal State, State. yeah, right. And I can remember from when I was very little, riding through campus and looking at Stanley and Clyde Hall and all of the sheets hanging out the windows for homecoming and all the confetti on the streets. And that always stuck with me. And when I had my very first homecoming in 1980, I thought about when I was a little girl and what it would mean to my grandparents knowing that I was actually there then. Very cool. Very cool, Jen. Well, um, I'm sorry that, you know, your uh, normal parade place won't be available this year since we are going to be virtual, right? Hopefully this is the last, the first and only virtual homecoming we'll ever have to uh, uh, celebrate. Um, and then hopefully then 
next year we'll see you in the same spot, right? If all goes according to plan. Let's hope and pray. <laughs> I've been misjudging this year a lot. I bet. So that, that'll be like, maybe we'll like incorporate some where's Jen uh, <laughs> activity well, next year. Well, first. I'm not going to give any secrets, but you may have to have a where's Jen. Um, Period. For homecoming 2021 uh oh uh oh all right well we'll get into that a little bit later but jen i want to thank you for uh taking the time to share your memories with us um you know i i hope to uh be sharing an adult beverage with you at homecoming next year as opposed to meeting with you on zoom this year so um, well you know where i am after the parade every year so <laughs> That goes without saying. All right, Jen. Well, thank you again for sharing. And for those of you watching at home, we hope you're enjoying our homecoming memories. Uh, stay tuned for more homecoming um, programming as we roll on. And we're continuing our homecoming memories here uh, this evening as we talk to another one of our uh, alumna from Cal U. And I'm going to turn it over to her to introduce herself. All right. Hi, my name is Angie Boas. Um, I graduated in the fall of 2008 with a degree in elementary education and a minor in music. Angie, thanks so much for uh, taking the time to uh, uh, join us here for tonight as we are uh, compiling these memories to uh, be broadcast during our virtual homecoming ceremonies. So uh, we're asking everybody two questions. First one being, um, you know, knowing this is the PG-13 show, uh, do you have a favorite homecoming memory? I do. So in the fall of 2007, I actually ran for homecoming queen. Um, I unfortunately didn't win, but my friend Ashley Dixon won. And I think that's a, one of the great things is that we all kind of supported each other through the process. It wasn't like, oh, I don't like you and I'm going to take you down. You know, we all supported each other. So that was a really fun experience, making the banners, hanging out with a bunch of different people that I didn't know before. So that was always that was great. Uh, that's awesome. And I, I remember uh, that um, that year was, you know, year I was on campus all, also as an undergrad. And I do remember that court being very, you know, like everybody kind of won, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I think it was all, always really cool to see that it was never really like this, uh, you know, while it was a popularity contest, it wasn't like a popularity contest. You know right. I mean? It wasn't like it is in high school where it's like, oh, the most popular person wins. Yeah, you know? no, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, awesome. Okay, so the second question, and this is the tough one, right? Um, <laughs> what does homecoming mean to you? Um, so homecoming means to me spending time with my friends. So all my friends who basically became my family and who are now my distant family who still live in California uh, and Cal U, or they live around Cal U, or they still live near Pittsburgh, or they live all over. It's, it's about, to me, it was about spending time with my new family and and meeting new people i met a lot of new people doing the homecoming thing and um really getting to know people through making the floats and walking the streets of cal u and getting to pass out things to all the little kids so i think it's really about you know spending time with your new friends and making memories awesome so do you have any uh, of your cal u friends you want to shout out real quick before we sign it off uh sure oh my gosh there's so many uh lauren sipley chris sipley maria grudovich uh you ryan uh brian trathowin all the people that i used to hang out with in building seven when it was called jefferson but i don't i forget what it's called now so uh, it, it's vulcan village now but it'll vulcan always village. be jefferson. that's it'll how old i am uh, it'll, yeah you're jefferson years old right you know yeah, exactly. can't tell me otherwise yeah. Well, Angie, I want to thank you for uh, joining us and sharing your homecoming memory. Uh, yeah. And we hope that uh, everyone watching home, uh, you're enjoying these as well as we continue to celebrate homecoming at home. And we're continuing our retrospective at homecoming at home uh, as we talk to fellow alumni about their experiences with homecoming. So we have another guest today, and I'd like her to introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name's Dawn Wilson. I was Dawn Fredrickson back then, so I'm now Dawn Fredrickson Wilson, but I'm a graduate of the class of 1970, and I had the honor and privilege of being the 1968 homecoming queen. 
Awesome. Don, thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Um, uh, we're going to be very respectful of your time. You know, we appreciate you checking in with us today and uh, reminiscing with us. So uh, just uh, a few questions here for you. Uh, firstly, uh, what does homecoming mean to you as an alumna of the university? Well, for me, it's all about the connections, uh, the connections I made the four years I was on campus. And I made connections um, to people. I made connections um, um, to my purpose. I made connections uh, to ideas in the classrooms with my, with my professors. It opened whole new worlds for me. Um, as far as my purpose, that I wasn't sure if I wanted to go into education, but once I started to take my education classes, I knew that I had found my purpose and I recently retired uh, after many years uh, and I'm, I'm still doing consulting work uh, because it is my passion. But most importantly, I found my people and um, It, I guess it wasn't a coincidence that I was assigned to Stanton Hall Dormant uh, band as a freshman. And um, the girls who were assigned to the rooms around me have become my lifelong friends. We get together uh, virtually. Uh, we stay in touch by email. Uh, we've come to Kara House for lunch. Um, we've come to the last several homecomings. And uh, it's the people that... Um, have been the most important to me in terms of the connections I've made. So I'd like to give a shout out to them. Hey girls, Sigma Kappa sisters, I miss you. And we, we're, we're gonna miss you guys on campus this year. I know the last several years, like you said, we've been uh, every October, like we get together. So um, unfortunately we have to do it virtually this time, but hopefully this will be the last time we have to do it. Yeah, yeah right for sure. Next year too. So lastly, we want to ask, you know, now remember, this is the PG-13 uh, version of it. <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite homecoming memory that you'd like to share with us? Uh, yes, I, I do. Um, and it was homecoming of 1968. And um, that was a very special day. And, you know, they say that one day can change your life. And that's the day that changed my life. Um, I call it the crown effect. I had never experienced it before. I started to wear the crown that day, but what happens when you wear a crown is people that you don't know, total strangers, will come up to you and wanna talk. They're very friendly, they're very happy, very cordial, and they wanna tell you a little bit of their life story. So you learn to be a listener um, when, when you're wearing your crown. And um, one of the other pieces I remember was uh, very fondly is it's almost like time stood still at halftime. And I remember looking along the fence line and I saw my parents and my family members and I, I great clarity, I can still see where people were sitting in the stands. And then some of my sisters were uh, majorettes and cheerleaders and in the band. So they were close by on the field. And I said to myself, I'm going to take a mental snapshot of this because I want to remember this moment forever. And um, I have, and there, there have been times in my life when I have needed to pull that snapshot out to remember that feeling. It was like a force, um, um, a force of love and support. Um, so I pull that snapshot out occasionally when I need it to feel that force again. Um, so back to the, uh, my superpower, which is the crown effect. I'd like to share, I mean, if you wonder what is the crown effect. So um, this happened just a few years ago and it was, uh, I was with my friends and we were sitting up, uh, we used to call it the farm. I don't know if you still call it the farm, but uh, oh, it was tailgating. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it was, it was tailgating. And uh, we were sitting in the pavilion with, um, oh, it was the football players. It was the Vulcan football players. And um, I saw, and here's the crown effect. I saw this couple, a couple tables over, and um, they were African-American. I didn't know them, but they kept smiling and waving at me. And that's like, that's the crown effect, but something different happened. Um, the wife came over and said to me, um, do you mind coming over to meet my husband? And I said, okay. And she said, he was a football player uh, about the time you were in um, 
at Cal U, and he never got to meet a Cal U homecoming queen. And he wants to know if you'll come over and I'll take your picture. And I said, sure. So I went over and I spent some time um, listening to him. We exchanged stories about what it was like back in the day. And he started to talk to me about both visible and invisible barriers um, that he encountered um, when he was at Cal U. And this like, uh, this opened my eyes. Um, uh, you know, I believe that um, we're all put on earth to walk each other home. And just listening to him that day and hearing his story, um, we both practiced um, indiscriminate kindness. And um, I learned that kindness is really colorblind. Um, so, and yes, his wife did take the picture uh, of us. So um, that's, how, that's how the crown effect uh, works. And um, I, I'd like to say also that I'm very grateful uh, to Cal U um, for the education I got, for the people I met, uh, for finding my purpose there. Um, it's been um, a wonderful journey that I've been on, and I give a lot of credit to Cal U for that. And uh, I also want to give a shout out to the class of 1970. And uh, I hope I get to see you next year in California um, at, the, at the homecoming. And um, bring your crowns, visible or invisible, and we'll all practice kindness together. Be well. Excellent. God bless. Excellent. I'm with it. Thank you so much, Don, and I, I can't agree more. Um, I, I really look forward and hope that we can be, you know, I hope this is the only virtual homecoming we ever have to have. Uh, and I really hope that yes, we're able to, sure. yeah, and celebrate, you know, we had to postpone it, but we're looking forward to celebrating the class of 1970 next year. Um, and I want to see the crown effect in action. I, I really want to <laughs> see that. So maybe we'll have some new folks here from this, uh, our me memories uh, video here uh, that they'll, you know, crown effect will be on them too. So thanks again for sharing the for your memories and what homecoming means to you. And thank you all for tuning in tonight. And uh, please enjoy our other memories as we share them today. Hello, my name is Lakaja Bynum and I was the 2016 Homecoming Queen. My favorite memory of Homecoming was of course running and winning Queen. From the parade to walking across the field, hearing everyone cheer me on, it was very exciting and I will always remember that. What Homecoming means to me is it just brings back everyone from the years in the past and it's a, it's a gathering, it's fun and I really enjoy that. As you can see, I made a shrine for homecoming because I really enjoy it. And this is something that I'll always remember and I keep this in my room at my parents. And we're continuing our retrospective on homecoming and homecoming memories here. Uh, we have another guest with us and I'm gonna turn it over to her to introduce herself today. Hi, I'm Kathy Holloway Connolly. I'm the class of 1995 and 1996. Awesome, Kathy, thank you for joining us here today. Uh, it's always good to see you. Um, as you know, we're celebrating homecoming at home. And, um, but in light of that, you know, we know that it's a very important part to a lot of uh, alumni um, every year. So um, Kathy, can you share with me, uh, uh, you know, a PG-13, uh, home, favorite homecoming memory that you might have? Definitely. Well, coming to Cal from Maryland, um, I didn't really go home on weekends or anything like that. So in the fall of 1992, I pledged Alpha Sigma Alpha. And my favorite homecoming memory was pomping with my pledge sisters um, and working with skulls on our float. And then the most fun of it all was being in the parade and getting to meet so many people. Absolutely. And I, I think that's, you know, I think that's the, the toughest part this year as we celebrate safely from home, that really lack of 
seeing everybody on campus and being able to bounce around different places. I think it's tough. And I, I know for, for one, I'm looking forward to that, you know, when we can do it again uh, in person. Definitely. And then um, our second question, you know, uh, and realizing that you wear many hats as an alumna, uh, as the parent of a uh, Cal U student, um, and as a staff member, you know, what does homecoming mean to you? And, and if you want to talk about what it means to you in all of those different roles, that's cool too. Absolutely. Um, what it means to me as an alumna is I love coming back every year and seeing faces that I haven't seen in years and being able to instantly pick up right where we left off like no time has passed. Even though 20 some plus years have passed, it's just great to see all those faces and reconnect. As a parent, I look forward to being able to have my son go to homecoming and also experience the parade and the, you know, getting to know people, the game, all of that good stuff. And as a staff member, <laughs> I really like look forward to basically the same stuff as an alumna, like reconnecting with people, getting people re-engaged with their alma mater. Um, I have so many great Cal U memories and I know my fellow grads have those same memories and just love reconnecting and reminiscing about that stuff. Cal U is really home for a lot of us. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's, that's a big, that's a big thing there too. It's, it's that whole feeling of coming home, you know, uh, it's funny. I, like I just, um, and it'll be released here, uh, with, uh, you know, it's available with some of this other content, but you know, one of my favorite things is giving the campus tour, uh, to people that haven't been back for maybe a year or 10 years or 50 years, a lot of times. So, you know, um, so I think that's something that I, you know, that I'll miss this year and, and not being able to, give personalized, but hopefully we'll have something uh, uh, cool cooked up for everyone to view on YouTube here today too. So. Absolutely. And I mean, I love when, when like a friend or, you know, fellow alum comes back and they're like, where's Clyde Hall? Where's Stanley? Where's Benz? And just seeing their face when they see the campus totally transformed, but Absolutely. still going back in the quad and having it look the same. So it's really yeah, cool. right. There's like these pockets of campus that are like, um, you know, like timeless. Right. And there's other parts that have changed. So it's always cool to see like that blended. And, and, and I, I always like to see too, when we got those folks that come back from maybe when it was like Cal state teachers college or Cal state right. college. Uh, and it's, and, and you kind of get that little history lesson. Well, that's where this was. And this building used to have this. And I always thought that was, that's always very cool to see too. So can't wait to get back to that next year. Me neither. I'm awesome. ready. Well, <laughs> yeah, right. Well, Kathy, thanks for joining us and sharing your homecoming memories. We Thank hope that you all are enjoying our retrospective here um, and continue to check out for more memories shared from our alumni. And welcome back as we continue our homecoming at home retrospective uh, as we share our favorite homecoming memories with other alumni. Uh, we have another special guest with us today, and I'm going to have him introduce himself here to you all. Hey, everybody. Um... Justin James here, class of 2012 and 2014. Ryan, thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, man, thanks for uh, helping us out here. So Justin, we'll keep this short and sweet. We've got two questions that we're asking folks here today uh, about you know their homecoming uh, experiences. So first, um, understanding this is the PG-13 show, uh, do you have a favorite homecoming memory that stands out uh, for you? Well, <sighs> My favorite homecoming memory actually comes as an alumnus and not as a student. Um, as a student, I was living in the moment more so, as students should. Um, so, so what you're saying I is, it, there's not many that you remember, maybe. Is that is that? Because um, I, I have, will, first full off, disclosure, I have a few of those, you know. I will not self-incriminate, self, uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> but <the> fifth. Um, <laughs> so... The reason why I say that, let me give you context. So I finished my GA in 2013 and I was working in Pittsburgh for a little bit. Then I moved to Florida um, for a couple of years and then I moved back. So the first time I came back to campus was four years after uh, I got off, I graduated. Uh, well, four years after my GA ended, I graduated in 2014 um, with my master's. So it was four years later, I came back and it was the first time I had a chance to really take things in as an alumnus, because like I said, 
as a student, I was more so worried about like partying and stuff. And, and I had a different appreciation for it. It was super hot that year. I don't know if you remember. It was super hot that year. Um, but I had a chance to interact with so many more of my friends. And it was just a great feeling. We were at, at uh, Roadman and tailgating and went to the game, of course. But the feeling of being around all those people again, it brought back a lot of memories, you know, and because I, as a student, we took, we take things for granted. We're like, okay, this is going to last forever. We're living in the moment. But then when you, you leave and then you come back, it's like, wow, you know, I, sh I probably shouldn't have done that. You know, I, I should have looked, looked ahead a little bit, you know, and it was just great to be around all those people again. So it was my first time being back and I had a different appreciation for it. I looked at the university in a, in a different lens this time. And I was just thinking about all the memories. And um, remember uh, my friend Tyler Wynn, his father actually, you know, he was so hot. He was on the grill. He actually like, you know, he had to go to the hospital, I believe. He, had, he passed out. It was just a crazy I remember time. that. It was yeah. so hot. It was, yeah. And it was like a, almost 100 degrees out. And, yeah. yeah. And I had left at that time because uh, he was there for a while. But I remember that in my, in my head. So, like, wow, that was crazy. But it was so hot. But it was so much fun. And I saw so many people that I haven't seen since undergrad, people that had graduated before. Um, there were a lot of people that were back. And um, that would probably be my most memorable moment. PG-13 moment. <laughs> so it was nice because, like I said, I came back, interacted with a bunch of people, and um, it was just a good time. It was a really good time, man. No, that's good, man. Um, so now thinking, you know, understanding that you have multiple hats here, um, you know, is there, uh, what does homecoming mean to you, whether as, a, as an alumnus or as a staff member currently? Well, <clears throat> I have a tremendous amount of pride and being a Vulcan. Um, it was, in my eyes, it was the first decision that I made, a first adult decision that I made. Like, okay, you know, high school is based off geography. Your parents live here, so you go to school here. But this is my choice. What do I want to study? What do I want to be? You know, or what do I aspire to be uh, when I grow up? So that was the first adult decision that I've made. And homecoming is a time where, like I said, we can reflect. Um, you get to come back, have that sense of pride, support your athletics, network with current students, uh, provide mentorship. And for me, you know, the first time I went to, I lived in Tampa for a couple of years. And the first time I went to Tampa was uh, for the Black, Brown, and College Bound Conference. I was a member of, of Cal Human United. So I fell in love with the city because I went, because of Cal, you know, and I moved there. And, um, Oddly enough, I met Tony for the first time. I'm not sure if I ever told you this, but I met Tony for the first time at a Bradenton event, our boss, Tony Morrow, great Denor guy. Uh, I met him for the first time at a Cal event in Bradenton and um, ended up working for him, you know, years later. You know, uh, I never would have met my wife if it wasn't for Kyle Love. So shout out to Kyle Love. Um, we met, my wife and I, we met uh, at, a, at his birthday party in 2014 so for me cal means so much and homecoming is a time where i get to come back and and see all these people and not relive the same memories that i've once made as a student but you have a different appreciation for it and as a staff member you know i get to see it from another lens and it just i want to I want people to know the appreciation and affinity that I have for the university and I want them to share that too. So however I can do that, that's what I try to do in my, also in my role as well. So I, I just can't, I can't speak highly enough about the love and appreciation that I have for the university. And when, when homecoming is here, you know, it's a time to, to come back and enjoy those memories, make new ones. And um, so that for me, that's, that's how I feel about homecoming. You know, I, I want everybody else to share those same sentiments. And um, it's just a great time. And I'm so happy that we're doing this because it's something that still lets our alumni know, hey, you're still a part of our growing family. You know, it's, this is what it is. And you're Caillou for life. And we want to make sure that we're, we're sticking to that. Um, so that's what homecoming means to me, man. 
Thanks, man. I appreciate that. And, and it's the truth. You know, uh, this would have been the uh, 79, uh, 71st year of home. I mean, this is the, our 71st homecoming. It sucks that the, the, the 71st is the first one that has to be virtual. Um, hopefully it's the last one that has to be hopefully virtual too, yes. you know, yes. um, for sure. But I, I, I'll feel you too. I mean, it's, it's um, I think this is a great way for us to still reminisce and, and, and celebrate those things um, that, that we find dear about homecoming. So yeah, man. Well, thank you again for uh, sharing your memories here, man. Uh, I, I know you're very busy, so I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to day. Um, and for those of you watching at home, please continue to check out all of our coverage here uh, of past parades and homecoming football highlights and, and memories. Uh, we appreciate you joining us for Homecoming at Home. And we're back and continuing to share our uh, walk down memory lane here as we talk to various alumni about their homecoming memories. And we have another individual uh, that's going to share their memory here, and I'd like her to introduce herself. Hi, I'm Missy Dunn, Director of Student Activities and Leadership at Cal U and two-time graduate. Awesome. Missy, thank you so much for taking the time out to uh, answer our little uh, lightning round of questions here. So <laughs> we'll hop right into it. Um, Remember, this is a PG-13 show, so do you have a favorite homecoming memory, whether it's as a student, as an alumna, or, you know, back in your role as a staff member? Yeah, um, I actually, you know, my favorite as a student, I am a part of a Greek organization. I'm a Sigma Kappa and was very active when I was in school um, at the university, both through my undergraduate and graduate degrees. Um, and so that was always fun. My favorite memories were always, you know, pomping our floats and being all together that week um, in the basement of some crazy fraternity house somewhere, you know, trying to build things out of um, chicken wire and tissue paper. <laughs> so I'm still amazed at all the times that um, we pulled that off and were able to um, be in the parade, you know, on Saturday morning. But um, just thinking back to those times with all of my friends and you know, some of my sorority sisters, and then being able to see everybody that came back. Um, that's definitely, you know, my fondest memory as a student. Awesome. And, and I think that's shared by a lot of our alumni as well. Mm -hmm. um, so knowing that you have worn so many Cal U hats, right? Um, right. You know, and, and, and one that we didn't even talk about, you know, especially this year being like the football coach's wife and, and right. knowing that you're, you know, you're so involved there too. Um, but, but, all of that aside, and hopefully this being the only virtual homecoming we ever have to do, right? Um, what, what is uh, your, uh, or, or excuse me, what does homecoming mean to you? Uh, whether it's all of those hats or just one. Well, I'll tell you, um, it's really become a little more special over the last four football seasons and homecomings that we've had. Um, I have been running homecoming in my role with the university on the student side of things um, for uh, 10 years, believe it or not, you know, Dr. Pernardi passed the hat um, to me, you know, 10 years ago, and I've had the, you know, opportunity to work with all of our student groups and plan the parade and, you know, the week full of events. But then when, you know, my husband became the head football coach, it opened up a whole new world to us. And it's really just been so cool to see everybody from our generation and, you know, other generations celebrate and, um, you know, be proud of their Balkans and want to be around us. And so I do wear that day is very stressful and tiring for me. Um, but it all, you know, you feel a sense of accomplishment at the end of it. And you're just surrounded by um, a group of wonderful friends that, you know, you've known for so long and, and in good friends that we've made through this time that Gary's been back. So it's a full family affair for us. Um, you know, it always has been and we're just so happy to be able to still be a part of it and as active as we are together. Awesome. Yeah, I know I, um, I still have my alarm set for like 3 a.m. on that Saturday. Right. It's because I, like, I don't know what to do with myself beyond that, you know. I know. I know. It'll, it'll definitely be different this year. Um, but we're looking forward to, you know, seeing everybody in different ways, little, you know, groups of people here and there and just, you know, celebrating homecoming from our new house here in town, you know, and being able to um, to do some different celebrations with some different groups of people. So, you know, even though we'll be virtually all together, I think that it'll be fun um, to figure out a way to connect with each other, you know, a little bit different this year. 
Agreed. And whoever thought when we were planning all this, you know, in the before times that the 71st <laughs> version of Homecoming would have been the virtual one, right? So right, right. Hopefully we'll be back. <laughs> no uh, one. 3 a.m. wake up calls next year and, uh, you know, not going home until the last, uh, you know, until it's way after dark. So, yeah, never thought I would miss it, but I, I for sure miss it, man. Same here, same here. <laughs> well, Missy, thanks for joining us. And for those watching home, we hope you continue to, to stick with us through our virtual homecoming at home presentation.